He'll be here. He better be. And if he ain't, we've already got the cuffs on you. This scrap metal make you feel safe, pig. You wanna run that by me again? I heard you weren't bright, but this... That's enough. Jesus! Talk. I'm still trying to make sense of it myself. This ain't right, Jim. We should have called animal control the moment this freak showed up. <sighs> now we're standing out here with this... this... Bullock, why don't you get started on today's paperwork? And leave you up here with these two? You hitting my flask or something? Downstairs, Harvey. I got this. Suit yourself. Just don't say I didn't warn you. Wayland Jones turned himself in about an hour ago. Killer Croc. That ain't my name. Tabloids say otherwise. Heard the tabloids say some things about you, too. He agreed to enter custody, peacefully, if we gave him a chance to speak to you first. Consider this your chance, then, Jones. It's passing you by. Paper's been saying I'm responsible for these missing kids. You're not? Would I be here if I was? It wouldn't be the first time one of Moroni's men got desperate. Everything I've done for Maroney has been on the straight and narrow. I'm just a driver. And I just quit smoking. I can't believe this. Why are you here, Waylon? <sighs> Child killer ain't the kind of rep I can afford. I've been working hard to get where I'm at. Can't let some two-bit journalist chasing a headline ruin that for me. You can prove that you're not behind this? Better than that, I can show you who is. Hold on now. That wasn't part of our deal. You said talk with Batman. I can't just let you walk out of here holding his hand. You're in police custody now. When we're done, I'll come back. Lock me up then if you want. And we just take you on your word? My word's the only thing that's kept me from eating bacon at night. Kept you a lot safer than these cuffs ever could. What do you think? We give him what he wants. You could have come down here on your own. Mm -hmm. And who would have believed me? You could have brought Gordon. That's supposed to be a joke. Truth is, you're the only one who could understand. Understand what? Not every man who looks like a monster wants to be one. Can't tell me you want to wear that mask. Spend every night in the gutter with guys like me. In a perfect world, there ain't no Batman. Ain't no Killer Croc, neither. Why do you do it, then? Do what? Survive? I do what I have to, same as anyone else in this city. Fact is, nowhere but the underbelly of Gotham was willing to give me a chance. Before all this, it was the freak show. The bars, the glass, the stage. Oh, same difference, ain't it? 
I'm the man I am. The man the papers want to call a cannibal and a predator. Because that's who the world wants me to be. You keep your eyes out, though, Batman. One day, I'm going to be my own man. Bigger than Maroni. Bigger than... Stop talking. That's one of them. This is the place. What is this? I got her around me, children. Your captain has come home. That's your guy. I've brought you presents. Rewards for how faithfully you have served me. Together, we've taken everything we can ask for from the streets above and gathered it down here, tucked it away where no one can see. We've buried all their riches on our very own treasure island. What's ours is ours! What's what is ours? Ours. ours? That's right. Down here, we're in charge. We can do whatever we please, stay up late, eat whatever our hearts desire. We can play and run and make every dream into a reality. As long as you listen to your captain, of course. I'm the one who made this all possible, aren't I? I pulled you from ye windows, saved ye from them cruel adults. No more school, no more doctors, no more rules. It's all thanks to me. You all agree, don't you? Yes. Why then have you failed me? Let's go. Don't move. <sighs> you there! You're supposed to be me right hand, aren't ye? Me first mate. You're supposed to guide this ship and keep these boys and girls in line while I'm away. And yet, I've heard that our friends at the GCPD no longer believe the lumbering crock to be our villain. We've been down here all day. I swear, none of us said nothing. Oh, but someone must have said something. And I know it wasn't me. I have been working extra hard to afford you all this life of luxury. This secret life away from everyone who wants to see you leashed. I'm the one protecting ye. Don't you see? Tick tock, Batman. Not yet. If we're going to keep this up, we can't afford any stragglers. A crew is only as strong as its weakest mate. And you, me boy, you haven't got your sea legs yet. That's right. It's time for the plank. No, oh, please. I don't want to. But you will. <laughs> ah! Me hand! The Batman? Here. You thought you could run this city by stealing your children. Where are ye? There! You thought you wouldn't have to have answer to that. Come down here and face me. You thought you wouldn't have to answer to me. Down here, I don't answer to anyone. You're in my domain, Batman. No, you're in mine. He's come to our island to take you all away. To take our treasure. Stop him. It's ours. 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 It's
What did you do? Sometimes, sometimes the world gets what it wants. Don't want to say I told you so. But you're going to, aren't you? Please, not now. Next time, we call animal control first. You're there, aren't you? I'm everywhere. You sure about this one? Whelan needs Blackgate, not Arkham. Pieces of that old man stuck in his teeth really makes that hard to believe. Arkham won't treat him like he's human. Is he? He deserves to be. I guess that's more than we can say for the rest of us. Hello everyone, and welcome to another of these behind-the-scenes interviews with the cast and crew of Echoes of the Night. This time, we're talking with the voice actor of kind of the dual protagonist star of this episode, Killer Croc, portrayed by the one, the only, Matthew Rivera slash Switch the Weirdo. You guys doing? How's everybody? Hope glad to be. Uh, glad to have you on here. Um, before we get too deep into the content of the episode itself and your role, I want to open with the question I've asked everyone on this show so far, and that is, what are your experiences with the character of Batman, and why would you want to join a project like this? Batman is, is say classic is an understatement. You know, I, I'm sure anybody who one point or another got into comic books or superhero cartoons, movies, the, the cinematic universe. One of the staple characters you get are Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, Iron Man, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, growing up, Batman was always that, that you know, you want a deep character, you go for Batman. And, uh, you know, of course, my personal favorite is Spider-Man, but that was uh, the more early childhood growing up and just seeing that colorful hero type, you know, same with Superman. It wasn't until I was a little bit older that I started like really appreciating the depths of that Batman. A little by little, as I grew older, it just it, it became deeper and deeper. I mean, Batman's one of the only characters I can think of in comics personally that I've read that like even the most minor itty bitty role of a character could be so deep psychologically and have such a major part of the storyline as far as characterization. That that to me is just such a special. Mm hmm definitely. And I feel like you've you helped bring that to a character in Batman's universe that is kind of I, I guess we could say relegated to a role of Fog, despite kind of being iconic, he's made appearances in the Arkham games, he's in the animated series, you'd be hard pressed to find a Batman thing that doesn't include Killer Croc. But do you think it's fair to say that no one's really tried to deep dive with this character before? I think I mean, first and foremost, the writing was top notch. I mean, you know, just going through before I had even a full script, just a few lines that I'd been able to get for the audition off rip. I was like, "Wow, Croc's being taken seriously. This is nice." You know, I mean, not that he never was taken seriously as a character before, but it felt like his his person, his own his own psyche, was taken a little bit more seriously this time around, and. uh Croc is actually up there as far as Batman villains is one of my personal favorites. Um, him get a little bit more just, you know, big grueling beast that, that Batman has to deal with because he's a big, you know, big, strong monster, so to speak. Uh, it, it was, it was, I want to say just relieving as much as it was refreshing. It, it was, it was nice to see a character that, could have more actually get more mm -hmm. um and it was easy to kind of fall suit from there you know again as, as a character that i like um having Buck really explore very subtly to explore that more person side of him the the side of him that might not want to look in the mirror and see the monster that he see um, be known as a as a cannibal out in society that just eats people he's the the, the beast lurking in the sewers you know he he not want to see that every day sometimes he wants to wake up and just remind himself that he's a person too mm -hmm. a lot of the choices that he's made in his life is because of his situation 
Oh, and, and I think the writing beautifully nailed that, uh, especially in his relationship with Batman to boot. Um, there's a lot of uh, beautiful soliloquies there. Um, and um, as far as putting the voice to that, originally, um, as you know, the original audition, I handled it very, like, just monster voice-ish. Um, feel was fitting, but second time around when it came to full script rather than just audition, I had to put a little bit more of the human side into that, a little bit more of the regret, the pain, the, the again, not wanting to see himself in that light, but understanding to a degree, unfortunately, it also is what it is. He can't really escape too much of it. Mm-hmm. And I definitely and, think... Um, um... A lot of that, first of all, just on the writing side, I want to give a shout out to Jesse, who is the was the writer of this episode. And um, we'll have an interview with him on another episode he wrote coming up in this season. Uh, but I definitely agree. I, I definitely think the approach to Croc with that was just fantastic. Um, the way that parallels how Batman views himself uh, was superb. And going into that, your performance, and I, I, I kind of merged the two takes in my head when you gave the audition and your actual croc voice in proper script is it's almost like that voice you gave in your initial audition like the the monster voice that's the voice he has to put on that that's the voice he he puts on when he's with the gangsters and he wants to look intimidating and he he's kind of playing up the role that they have for him whereas in this episode when he's mainly with I batman it, it's kind of this um a, a, a kinmanship between two people who have to play a role except the tragedy with croc is he is not wearing a costume that's the thing that i can't help but personally love so much about Waylon is that he again he can't just like batman like you were saying with batman just now he can't take that mask off um and it's something that i think again beautifully done jesse did an amazing job putting pen to paper with that one um, that he not only acknowledges, but almost wants to shun. But then there are other times that, again, like you said, playing the role, sometimes he recognizes that it fits his needs. And he goes with it. You know, sometimes, hey, if I got to be the monster, I'm going to be the monster. It is what it is. I'll, I'll give the people what they want. Uh, to a degree, reality sets in, I feel, for him often. And... uh when that reality sets in, it's that that bitterness of knowing he can't do anything about it as much as he might want to. And then from there, he has to make his choice as far as, oh, do I fight it and probably get nowhere with this? Because who's going to, I mean, what is he going to go work at a, at, a, at a supermarket looking like a giant alligator? Mm-hmm. Crocodile, I should say. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, he can't live a normal life. He recognizes that. Oh, and, 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 for somebody who looks he does you know any type of honest work would probably be something demeaning and i think um, that's which something... that was also touched up on very well mm-hmm. and i think that's something where um we've got this idea of a young batman uh like he's in like his second year barely he's like 22 21 um and he doesn't really he's still in that fight crime mentality Whereas Croc is kind of the first time he meets something that Croc is a direct product of society and like and the prejudices people have, um, and it's Batman kind of realizing that is the issue rather than the fact that he's the criminal. Did that one get picked up or did that one drop still? Right <laughs> at the end, I didn't. I didn't know if it was a pause. That's why I waited. It clipped right at the perfect time that I was like, oh, I'm not sure if that was uh, him collecting his thoughts <laughs> or if we just clipped off. <laughs> it's a clap. It's a clap. <laughs> um, I last heard uh, with um, him and Batman as far as Batman recognizing that it's, he's a product of society, mm-hmm. that he's not just you know your average everyday thug who's just evil. Yeah, so just... Um... Again... And again, I feel like that's another another big part about him that, uh, again, I love that in it's not your average everyday thug who just decides to take the easy way out and says, hey, you know, it's easier to pull a trigger than it is to wake up early every morning and work an honest man. You know? 
rock, it's, I mean, the do. It's either this or, like, I mean, I have to survive at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Person, too, unfortunately. I, I have needs and wishes as well, but you look the way I do. I mean, imagine Croc walking down the street just casually, like, oh, I'm going to take a, a stroll. I mean, people be freaking out and acting like Godzilla's walking down Gotham. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's poor guy. It, 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 he's not even causing any harm, but, I mean, at the same time, could you blame civilians? I mean, I'm... I think they did an excellent job with Croc's makeup in Suicide Squad. And, I mean, as a perfect example, imagine somebody like that was just walking down the street and passed by you. Who's up? Uh. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he's man. Even when you get to stuff like the Arkham games where he's got the huge tail and, like, he looks like he's Godzilla. Yeah. Um, you, you can't imagine how hard that is for him. Yeah. So I, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Given all of this, and given this is this this universe's version of Croc, and this first appearance of this character, where would you like? Um, just because obviously we haven't discussed anything with you prior uh, about like future plans or anything, but just just in your own head, where would you like to take this version? I like what? I'm sorry, it skipped. Where would you like to take this version of Croc in future? Man, I mean, I think want to do any type of spoils or anything as far as the episode just in case anybody sees this before they actually get to watch the piece because it's going to be amazing um and i'm not selling myself i'm selling what work you guys are doing because you guys are doing a freaking fantastic job um the way it's set up in my opinion is the perfect setup for croc to be explored more than just the thug at the same time it's still very well known who he's Self as not just society but a way of again we've got some reflection between him and batman I'd like to see croc explored maybe not per se anti-hero but not your conventional villain either i i and in, in all obviously iterations of him but in many common ones uh, bigger ones like arkham for example and he's usually just handled as the big you know big boss character the big tank the scary jump scare oh shit you know man croc's gonna get me character you know and um i think he has enough humanity behind him to where and especially the way it's set up now that can be explored a little bit deeper maybe he'd be a little bit more prone to helping batman in situations where it's uh also something that would benefit him not just for the sake of lottie died just feel like being a good guy um at the same time, also show that he's not necessarily, personality-wise, a monster either. Mm -hmm. um, show a little bit of reflection there. You know, I don't, I don't want to make it seem too much like he's got a double personality thing going. There's, I feel there's definitely a double identity going, and um, that reflected in. It depends on the story, of course, but seeing that reflected in the right way, I think would do him a lot of justice as a character. You know, you see characters like, you know, Joker, for example. We've seen iterations of Joker where Joker ends up having, you know, goofy buddy cop moments with Batman. They're a joy because seeing those two together is always a joy together, whether it be buddy cop or they're, you know, hand to hand with each other. It's always a good time. But characters like Croc, where a lot of people see him one dimensionally, I feel, or two dimensionally even, I feel like adding that extra aspect of humanity really driving it home without, like, really rubbing it in the viewer's face do a lot of good for his character. Given all of that, where can people find you? Um, I have main source and probably the quickest way to get in contact with me or just up see updates of what I'm doing or just games is via Twitter uh, at Switch the Weirdo. T A S W I T C H H A and Weirdo. Um to throw that out there a lot of people try to find me with the and oh, i had to be that super original kid when i first made the name and throw the a in there <laughs> um i also have a youtube account um for both voice acting and music um unfortunately uh for the voice acting account it's a newer account so i'm not going to be able to actually give it its own handle until i start getting some followers for anybody listening who might be interested with whether it be work or just for, you know, shits and giggles, hit me up on Twitter. 
I have no problem responding to people. I'm very open, very active, very responsive. And as you can probably tell with the way I like to drone on, I love to talk, so. <laughs> That's why we're all here. All we do in this all we do on this channel is talk. <laughs> But it's so great. That's the good stuff, man. I'm here for the narratives, the conversations. I like, I like when, when, for example, when debates happen, but they're not people yelling at each other. Mm -hmm, definitely. It's a good time. I love hearing people's perspectives and and their their point of views and and how you know, especially in situations with comics like this, I love hearing how people are are you know, they're, they're, it reflects to them how how it makes for them. You know, they might have grown up and and comics or gotten into comics later or batman might mean to them or what you know even other characters might mean to them i know i have a personal love relationship with uh with freeze it's a character i love to death for you know all types of crazy reasons in, in relation to him and i love hearing that from other people and i'm sure I'm sure everyone else, because if I just speak for myself, I've loved hearing your take on this episode. Thank you so much for coming and joining me on to do this. Uh, and everyone at home who's enjoyed listening to this, links to Switches and all his stuff will be in the description. Um, we'll be back again next week with another episode, and at the end again we'll have another interview with one of the cast or crew. So keep your ears out for that. And as always, have fun, geeks. <laughs> <laughs>